This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics. We promise to do our best to keep it both insightful but brief. On this episode, we have Luca Stefanati, Head of Product Marketing at Rentastic. Luca, welcome to the Business of Apps podcast. Thank you very much, Arte. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm looking forward to have this chat and conversation with you. Great. Thanks for coming. Okay, so when you turn on your TV or pick up your smartphone to read, watch, or listen to anything or play a game, chances are you'll see an ad. We live in the world full of ads. But have you noticed something peculiar? Every once in a while, you may see an ad that doesn't really look like an ad to you. Is there other a message that inspires you to do something good for this world? Yes, it is about buying a product or service, but in conjunction with what gives you a chance to do something that will make you feel better by helping people, by helping the world. On this episode, Luca will tell us about that kind of ad and how it actually can help you to move the needle for your app marketing campaign. But before we're going to be doing that, uh, let's start with you, Luca. Tell us about yourself. What is your background in marketing? Let's say it's a quite an extensive network uh, background, but at the same time, I'm not really, let's say, old in the app marketing world. Nonetheless, uh, I've been working in the mobile industry my entire working life, and I've been specialized in the product marketing, growth, and user acquisition field, let's say, throughout the companies I've been through and also the a bit of consultancy that I've done here and there. My focus uh, is particularly on, uh, in this precise moment, on health and fitness apps. And thanks to this and thanks to the fact that I work in the, uh, in, within Rantastic for the last three years and a half, I developed really several skills around, especially the health and fitness world. So I've been uh, in user acquisition, in app store optimization, and uh, uh, right now I'm actually the head of product marketing for the Adidas running app, leading a growth squad that actually have the objective to simply grow the uh, Adidas, Adidas running app. Before then this, uh, I studied uh, at Bocconi University. I did a Master of Science in Economics uh, and Management of Innovation Technologies. So it was really related to what I'm actually working on. And as I said, I had a sort of a medium uh, experience uh, in terms of time within the app world. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, let's say that um, uh, the biggest development in performance marketing have happened in the last five years. And I covered them all. <laughs> so let's say that um, I'm fairly experienced for, for what I'm doing. All right. Cool. So everybody knows about uh, Adidas or Adidas. It depends on which side of the Atlantic you're sitting. But less people know about Rantastic. Luca, please tell us about your company and what it does. Sure. So actually, I need to start with the fact that I'm Italian. So I will always say Adidas and not Adidas. <laughs> That's why you will hear this from me. But in any case, Rantastic is not a super little company, at least around Europe. At the moment, we are actually called Adidas Rantastic. So we are a leading health and fitness app that is a company that is actually proudly part of the Adidas family since 2015. We were founded in Austria, uh, so Austria, the country um, above Italy, like uh, with the Alps, the winter, uh, like the super nice winters and so on, mm -hmm. uh, in 2009. And uh, we are still located here in Austria. At the moment, uh, we have two apps out there in the world. And uh, the one, it's actually for tracking activities like running, cycling, and other GPS-based sports. And this one is called Adidas Running. It's the app I'm taking care of. And then uh, there is another one that it's actually for uh, body weight training. So like no equipment needed. You can do home training and so on. And that's called Adidas Training. Formerly, we were called uh, Rantastic and Rantastic Results. And when I was saying that we are not so little, it's 
simply because we have more than 370 million app downloads across the world uh, wow. with more than 168 million uh, registered users. So we are quite famous, but let's say our especially biggest market are uh, some uh, big European markets, so like uh, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, uh, and so on. Instead, on the other side of the world, we have a lot of competitors <laughs> going on. But yeah, uh, it's um, let's say that that's the um, a, a fast description of who we are. It's actually a great company, by the way. So like we are uh, we are still around 250 people, no more. So there is this alpha way startup feeling, but we are still part of the the Adidas company. So it's fast paced but also with a global brand. That's cool. Right. That's, that's, um, I totally get the idea. Uh, one, the company, the app, the team is actually helping other people to be healthy. Well, what else you can wait for? What else you can dream for? You're doing your job, uh, you're being paid for it, and you know that your product helping other people to be healthy, to be active, to be, um, to be on the top in, in, in their lives. Uh, all right, there is, um, I would say there is a toolbox for app marketing tools that pretty much every app marketer is using. And it consists of app store optimization, paid user acquisition campaign, PR, advertising campaign via ad networks, influencer marketing, ads on TV and podcasts in, on radio, good old, good old offline marketing. But what I hear rarely, if ever, that one of those tools is actually an inspiration of higher purpose ad campaign. So how would you define what is higher purpose ad campaign, Luca? That's a, that's a great question. And I, I honestly um, had some troubles to define it by, for myself uh, because this is actually something different. It's, it, it's, it is really something that will give you the opportunity to fulfill a need that you, your user, uh, intrinsically have, but you never had the, the chance to exploit. So like uh, it, it has always been there somewhere uh, in um, in depth in, in you and so on. And uh, you never really had the, uh, not even the the feeling that you had, that you had it until you actually see something that triggers it. It will really give you the possibility to create something more, something beyond the simple, the simple usage of, of a product. So it is really something that we help you to change the world, maybe just in little, but definitely in better. It's something that can give you a purpose. So that, that's why maybe it's called higher purpose ad campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems really theoretical, but uh, and let me bring you an example. Like, for example, uh, the, the, those, uh, those ads that you were uh, citing before, those that do not even seem ads and so on, but they actually tell you a story or tell you that there is a problem out there in the world and you can do something for that. Now, think it about the, uh, like this. Uh, you add to this ad an action that you as a company can do to get the, the world better. Right. If the user put, uh, or like in general, the person, because it's, it's more than a user in this case, is, is really a person, if the person put the interest, the trust, and the, um, their action within your company, then, then you actually give something back. You give something back to the person and you give something back to the world. It's, it's, something, uh, uh, it's something that it's definitely on a higher level because it's, uh, it, uh, it's more than you purchase something and then I get you back a receipt you do something that I really value as a company. And then suddenly also another person do these exact same things. And then another person, and then another person, then another person. And then you create a movement. And then suddenly I have like some KPIs on my side of the company that are good. How can I give these KPIs back to the, to the person, to the people who actually trigger them? I, can I enable some action that all of them will feel really important for their lives. And that's exactly what we have been doing, for example, with the um, higher purpose campaign called Run for the Ocean. Uh, Run for the Ocean is uh, uh, one of the biggest movements that uh, we managed to create, to create together with Adidas. 
uh, where a person actually runs, so put a actual runs into our app to clean up the oceans. We clean up the ocean for the people, but we also obviously create uh, awareness that there is such a problem that it's pretty evident out there about how many plastic, how much plastic pollution there is out there, uh, there is in the ocean. And basically, if the person just put a lot of activities in a precise period of time, we will reward them by saying that and doing it. So it's not that we are only saying it, we are, we are definitely doing and posting also what, what has happened thanks to them, that we actually cleaned up the ocean. So their miles are going towards something bigger. It's, it's not about buying a product or so on. It's, it's, it's really about changing the world by doing an action. Like, you know, maybe those uh, likes on Facebook uh, for photos and so on, you, can, you need just to elevate them to the next level and make them count for real. That's exactly what a higher purpose uh, campaign is. So, so I, hope, I hope it was an explanation. <laughs> right, no, I, as far as I can get it, in a sense, it's, it's about charity. Uh, it's about your buying a product or service and, um, I'm just trying to kind of generalize your example because um, Adidas or Adidas is a worldwide recognized brand, and the running is the kind of activity I can really feel how it can be connected emotionally um, to a specific um, high purpose campaign. But how would you generalize your approach for running such campaigns to any app? Is it actually possible? I mean, app that belongs to uh, any other category. And what strategy would you suggest people to kind of a, build a bridge between an inspirational goal and the app? Probably one example will be helpful. Yeah, 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 no, definitely. Like the, this is a question that uh, several people have asked me and indeed uh, I need to tell you that no wonder there is no one solution fits all. Nonetheless, there are actually few aspects that will help you to do so for every app out there from small to big, without a brand or with a brand. So the first thing that you need to always consider is your user. So a lot of apps are being said to be user-centric, to customer-centric and so on. But here it's really when you need to be user-centric because you really need to understand your audience. You really need to understand what they are really caring about. And you really need to understand how they live their life patterns life patterns and so on because in this way you you will understand if there is a particular problem out there in the world that can be um, nutrition access to nutrition access to education plastic in the ocean or any other problem that is actually affecting our world that will resonate with them knowing the audience it's really the first basic step and then you need to understand in which way your app mechanics can help you fulfill this work so as soon as you have figured out the problem, you will have an app and you will have some app mechanics, app uh, KPIs that you need to foster and uh, some, uh, some deep connection in between your app and your user that is there, how basically your audience is using your app. How, you can, how can you leverage the app mechanics in order to resolve this problem? Here you need to be a bit creative. So, uh, for us, it was running, uh, putting miles in the app, and then uh, actually cleaning up the ocean or uh, educating the, the people, especially who is running in the cities and so on, to actually run and grabbing by themselves plastic on the run. Okay. It's, it's the type of activity that we have in app called blogging. <laughs> so um, that's, that's another example. So you really need to understand really well your user and really well your app and how the two are interacting to, together. And those are the really basic things that you can do. But the third um, and most important uh, uh, thing, uh, which may seem really stupid, honestly speaking, especially if you hear it right now, <laughs> it's that you need you, you as a person behind this campaign, you as a CEO, you as a marketing or engineer person, you really need to believe that what you are doing is the right thing. It, as I said, it really seems stupid or very theoretical, but this uh, actually translates uh, in actual empathy 
toward the end user. So you are the end user of your app. You are the first end user of your app. And as soon as you transmit this uh, and you feel this and uh, you are valuing this, uh, also your user will, will feel it. So it's three advices, but in, in general, just know your user, know your app and be really, really committed about what you're doing. Got it. That's a ni nice plan in general, holistic approach of how you can apply your concept to any app. Okay, now what does it take to succeed? How to measure a success of such campaign? And probably what is even more important, how not to fail? What you should always consider to make it a success? Definitely, definitely. So uh, let's start with measuring success. Measuring success is actually easy. Because success, it will be equal to your KPIs. So you would adopt such campaigns to drive brand visibility, NPS from your user, ROI, uh, or in general, really growth of your business. So app installs, uh, registration activities done in the app, or purchases, and so on. So like that's your success, full stop. It's really definitely up to you how to me you measure it. Uh, non, uh, however, um, you, need, you really need to have the empathy with your audience uh, and you really need to understand what they are truly caring about, as I was saying before. In, in this kind of society, you will really awake some inner desires, so you really need to be prepared for it. And that's actually what uh, brings me to the fail, like how, how you could fail and what you should do in order to avoid it. You really need to remember that uh, this... Uh, hidden desires are hidden. So like as soon as they are awoken, uh, they will be either really overwhelming for you. So like uh, uh, people will become passionate, people will be slightly out of, uh, let's say, your uh, uh, expected control of them, or it will not work. So like th that's, that's definitely a, a failure vision, uh, that you actually fail to assess the type of user that you have, and then uh, suddenly um, you find yourself with a campaign that is actually not resonating with your audience. And especially when this is not resonating with your audience, uh, um, you need uh, to figure it out that basically generating awareness is definitely not taking action for the cause. So like uh, you may be able to, set, to send this ad out there to create your social media strategy to do your PR about this and so on. So you are generating awareness, but if there is no real action behind it, if there is no things that get concluded or the users that are actually undertaking your awareness and so on, this will, will actually fail. So you really need to, again, know the user mm -hmm. and remember that generating awareness is not taking action So for the cause. So you can really do the biggest brand campaign, uh, spend tons of money in performance marketing to push your, your videos, your ads out and so on. And then suddenly you actually failed to generate action from the, the people that should care and that's gone. So that's, that's definitely gone. It's tough, it's tough. <laughs> Indeed. I see, it's definitely not easy if you wanna make it right and not to fail. How often would you suggest to run such campaigns? Can it be an ongoing effort? Should people run these campaigns on holidays, probably memorable dates in history, or it doesn't matter, can be uh, run anytime they want to? Yeah, it really depends. So I'm, I'm gonna give you an, an advice uh, on uh, an operational level and I'll do an advice on a strategic level, strategically. Mm -hmm. The advice on operational level is that this type of campaign shouldn't be long. So it should be concentrated uh, on a, let's say, maximum two, three weeks period of time, enough for the user to get in touch with it and do the first few action, and, uh, but not that much for the user to get bored out of it. Remember, we are living in a world that actually things are getting by very, very fast. Well, uh, in a couple of weeks, the next big topic will spark out. So you can also be reactive and do stuff uh, based on uh, events out there in the world uh, that are um, relevant for the public opinion or so on. 
But also this one needs to be treated super carefully because you need to be hyper fast in setting the things up. And remember that in three weeks top, things are gone and forgotten. Uh, so it, it, it's really operational, this advice. But the strategical one, it's actually that you should definitely invest into creating something that your user knows it's coming. So maybe creating a thing, a movement that goes on a couple of quarters after another couple of quarters or a year over a year or mm -hmm. so on. But there is always a standardized period, period of time. Yeah. So if you really want to make it uh, memorable, I wouldn't super attach it to other days unless it's relevant for you, your audience and to the ultimate purpose of the campaign. Because this is, could also be, a, a, let's say, um, a problem slash uh, it could be forgotten way easily. Remember, you are creating something original, something that most probably has never existed before. So you want to be sure you will be remembered for what you created, not right. for other things. So, yeah. Got it, got it. Okay, so I think, I hope people will be using higher purpose inspirational campaigns more because it, you know, win-win, it's better for their brand, it's better for the world, it's better for all of us. Now I have a few questions that are not related to the topic, and I'm asking these to my guests to paint a better picture of who they are. Okay, question number one, are you iOS or Android person? On which side are you? Okay, uh, I need to admit, when I recognize a great marketing hook strategy, I will always stay away from it. So that's why I'm an Android and not an Apple guy. <laughs> um, okay, okay, very thoughtful answer. <laughs> Do you remember your first mobile phone? That's actually a great question. So let me quickly think. If I remember well, it was a Nokia 3410. So like I'm, I'm really talking about mobile phone before doing the smartphone area. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This is what I'm asking. Mobile phone, which any phone you can put in your pocket. So it was definitely a Nokia 3410. So the, the evolution of the amazing 3310. So then I, I remember also this one was completely unbreakable. So an awesome phone. But then actually the first smartphone ever got was a BlackBerry. So, and I don't really recall the number. I was a BlackBerry fan back then uh, with all this extended keyboard and so on. Uh, great time, those ones. Yeah, keyboards, keyboards. Good old days. What is your favorite mobile app today? Apart from Adidas Running? Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> that's that's okay. easy. Cool. No, I, I mean, like, I'm honestly a runner, so uh, and Adidas running is my favorite app for tracking. But in any case, uh, yeah, if I need to choose somebody, something else, uh, I will go for Vivino, which is a wine tracker. Uh, I'm a, quite a wine enthusiast, and uh, the, the, the Vivino people actually created a, a super nice community of wine enthusiasts that actually exchange opinions and uh, enjoy tasting different wines. So I'm, I'm not saying that I'm super fan. I mean, I'm, I'm becoming a slightly influencer in the Austrian <laughs> world, <laughs> thanks to all my ratings. So I'm a, definitely a power user of the you know. Got it. Okay, when you look in your smartphone, uh, can you think of any technologies you would like to see in this thing to make it you know, more useful for you? I'm not asking about any, you know, gimmicks, hype, anything that, you know, just joining uh, the general trend, but asking, you know, thinking about something that you would like to see on this device, hardware, software, to make it more useful for you. Yeah. So let's say I have two particular topics that I'm really following super closely. And mm -hmm. uh, one, it's the world of augmented reality. Because this one has been fostered through some, uh, at the moment, quite famous apps and so on, like, right. I don't know, Pokemon Go or uh, other apps in the, in, in the industry also. But let's say in the... Ikea field, catalog. Sorry. sorry? Ikea catalog. Yeah. And uh, together with that, uh, actually in the industry, in the e-com industry and uh, in the health and fitness industry, 
This one is starting. It's starting. You can already see some apps that make you try the, the, the different models of shoes, of uh, clothes, and so on, on yourself. That's, mm-hmm. that's actually pretty interesting because it will shape the way how we consume uh, e-com uh, and uh, uh, mobile uh, e-com. So like th- that's that's really, really to maintain under control because uh, it, it will definitely change uh, our way of buying in, in not so much time. So I'm, I'm really keeping a uh, close eye on that. And together with that, uh, honestly speaking, I'm really worried because those up, uh, th- those augmented reality will enter the other topic I'm really following closely is the privacy and data customization world. So this is becoming relevant. Despite not being an Apple guy, I'm actually definitely following what Apple has introduced and also the, the new privacy campaign that is actually putting on. And that's, um, that's really, really interesting because it will enable people on one side to understand way more about the data that is being sold on the internet and so on. But on the other side, it will also create more needs more needs of data customization, more needs of data privacy and so on. So like that's that's another trend that it's evolving into a very interesting direction. That's very important. I, I can only agree with you, shake your hand, about privacy. And uh, long overdue that this thing should be part of the general equation for every de- developer, for basically every part of the app ecosystem, advertising platforms, developers, publishers, Okay, so before I let you go, how can people get in touch with you and know more about what you do? Definitely, if you search for me on LinkedIn and uh, Luca Stefanuti uh, or Adidas Running or so on, my name will pop up. Or uh, you can definitely also follow me on Twitter under Luca underscore ST21 or just search Luca, Luca Adidas Running or something like that. But yeah, those are the two main channels where uh, I also, if you have any further question about this podcast, uh, I can definitely answer and so on. So, All right. Terrific. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on our podcast. Uh, thanks for your time, Luca. Thank you. Thank you very much, Art, for having me and have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. And Ciao. that was Luca Stefanuti, Head of Product Marketing at Rontastic. To listen to more episodes, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. Just search for Business of Apps and you will find us easily. We release episodes on Mondays, so subscribe. And you'll be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet, or computer as soon as we release them. And please don't forget to leave us a review and comment on iTunes. It is highly appreciated. And... All episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.